His show, Prodigal Son, on Tuesdays at 9 Eastern on Fox. Season 2 premiered this past week, but uh, we have enjoyed his work in so many great uh, TV shows and films. Uh, certainly back uh, in the day, Stand and Deliver, La Bamba, and so much more. He is Lou Diamond Phillips here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Lou? I am great, Rich. Thank you so much for having me. No, thanks for coming on the show. Let's let's. Uh, n- normally, I can look at somebody's hometown and where they were born and try and figure out what sports team they might be affiliated with or or love. But <laughs> but you were you were born on a naval base in the Philippines. Is that right, Lou? I was indeed, uh, but I grew up in, mostly in Texas. Okay. So the Cowboys were my team of choice for the longest time. But after having four daughters, I'm afraid I've fallen off the sports <laughs> dad grid. <laughs> Okay, so then let's talk about back in the day. Uh, are we talking about like like how how far back Cowboys are we talking about for you? Oh Lou? my gosh, uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're we're talking seventies, eighties Cowboys. You okay. know, uh, uh, Staubach is that well, what you're talking about? You're talking about Roger Staubach back in the day, and and those one hundred percent. Right, yes, Roger Staubach, uh, uh, and you know something I showed with my dad, who was also in the military. So yeah, every every Sunday we were in front of the tube. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, you know what? I mean, like like a lot of old guys, I go there's there's no crew like the old crew, you know. Sure, of course, you know, no no doubt about that. So, because again, I, I I'm I'm I, I'm a lead pipe wielding professional, even though we just met. So I looked up uh, much of your history and your filmography. So to have appeared in an episode of Dallas, even for a split second, at the very part of beginning of your career, that had to be pretty big then. Since uh, that, oh, it was huge. I mean, that was that was actually absolutely one of my first jobs, and it was uh, the the moment where you know I thought, wow, I've I've arrived. You know, I'm I'm working with you know Linda Sue and on a on a nationally televised you know show, and uh, uh, it, it just became um, uh, a, a signpost that I was on I was on the right path. Certainly, yeah. I mean, I remember that show and how you'd saw Texas Stadium in the open, you know, in the flyover. You, they would look into the stadium, and that just always used to get me so excited. But for everybody, spoiler alert, you were not the one who shot J.R. Ewing. Correct, Lou? That was not um, you. That just was not just you. to be clear, that was not me. Okay. It's not you, so we, we can move on. <laughs> so then how did you first get uh, the gig, uh, your breakout role with La Bamba? What, how did that go down for you? Oh, my goodness. that You know, I mean, that's, that's kind of a – lightning in a bottle legend now but uh i, I was uh, working in the texas film industry i was doing a lot of you know small gigs like the one on dallas uh and they actually did a national talent search to find richie and came to dallas texas for one day uh i was put on videotape and flown out to hollywood a couple of weeks later where you know i won the screen test uh and the rest is history i i was actually literally still living in texas working as a local actor when uh, they quote unquote discovered me there, so you kind of like hit the lottery, is what you're saying, uh, in a way. No, it's huge, it's huge. I mean, uh, the, the 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 funny thing is, I've taught acting, uh, you know, off and on for a number of years, right. and everybody's going, well, how do you make it? And I said, well, you know, a big part of it is the luck. You just have to be in the right place at the right time, and that was the case for me. But that luck always comes with a great deal of preparation. So I had to be ready to accept that role when the opportunity came. But, you know, you cannot – you really cannot uh, control, uh, you know, what comes down the pike toward you. You just you just have to be ready for the chance when you call called off the bench, you know? Sure, that's the – you know, and to use another sports phrase um, that from Branch Rickey, the great general manager of the – Brooklyn Dodger days luck is the residue of design is the is the the great sports phrase so obviously so how did you prepare when you're when you know look look you just got to take a chance I mean I got my start in um in television sending a a a big thick three-quarter inch tape to a headhunter you know and putting a first class postage on it to make sure it got there right away and put it in the U.S. mail and ESPN found me I mean like I, I felt like I was struck by lightning uh, in that, but so how did you prepare for for this role for for such a, an open, wide, uh, countrywide casting, Lou? Well, I mean, one, you know, once again, it, it, it's it's all about uh, you know to to continue the sports analogy. You know, you train and you train and you train for that moment when you know it it it, uh, it happens. I mean, what was it? Bruce Lee says, uh, you know, I'm uh, uh, I'm not afraid of the guy that can throw a thousand kicks. I'm afraid of the guy that's practiced one kick a thousand times. <laughs> that's right. So. You know, at that point, you know, in my life, I had a degree in theater. I was training film acting with uh, Adam Rourke. I was teaching film acting. 
and all of that was a confluence that came together when I had the uh, the audition of a lifetime, and you know, there it was. So, um, do you sing karaoke, Lou? <laughs> I do, I do, and okay. uh, sadly enough. There's plenty of uh, video footage out there on the internet. Okay. Uh, and most of it good. I'm pretty happy about that. You should be. You should be. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that, that, that happens on occasion. So then when was the last time you sang La Bamba? When was the last time you actually did that? Lou wow, Phillips? the last time I sang La Bamba? Yeah, when was the last uh, time? Probably, you know what? Uh, I had a birthday party for Prodigal Son. That was a karaoke night. Uh, Bellamy Young, who's on the show, and Michael Sheen and I yes. all – all are within a couple of weeks of each other, and we threw a big karaoke party. And just to appease the crew, <laughs> and the cast and crew, I sang La Bamba. It's about to say appease is a great word because you must be just like really. Are you gonna really ask me to sing? <laughs> you must be like oh, really. You're gonna ask me to... Rich, I mean, I can't. I can't walk into a Mexican restaurant with a, with a mariachi band because I know it's gonna happen within four songs. <laughs> <laughs> Within four songs. Okay, that's let's kind of like name that tune. That's amazing. Lou Diamond Phillips here. And before we get to the to the here and now, uh, just lingering uh, in the past a little bit, uh, Young Guns. I mean, um, you know, that is a tremendous movie with a tremendous cast. What was it like to be uh, with all of those fellow actors at such a height uh, of so many different moments and careers for everybody at such a young age? What was that like? Uh, well, Lou? I have to say, Rich, Stepping onto that set, uh, I had done La Bamba, I had done Stand and Deliver. Right. Stepping on that set for me was the moment where I realized I had arrived. You know, La Bamba was a negative pickup through the studio, it was a low budget film. Stand and Deliver was a micro low budget film. And then suddenly I'm on a set with Emilio Estevez and Keeper Sutherland and Charlie Sheen. And, and you know, I thought, okay, that, that's it. I'm the ethnic member of the Brat Pack. And, uh, and is there a safe for work story? You could tell me a good safe for work story from from that safe for work story. Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, you know what? Emilio uh, uh, is a massive prankster. OK. Uh, the very first day of filming, uh, we all got these FedEx packages that were supposedly from Fox Studios mm -hmm. uh, that said, hey, you know, here's what we think of you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Emilio had sent them. And when you opened it up, it was a cow pie. So uh, it was after that moment, it was on. Okay. Uh, every, <laughs> the practical jokes came fast and furious after that. Okay. Now here's a uh, not safe for work story. Go for it. <laughs> no, you don't got one. I'm sure. No, I'm not going to do that. Because, okay. I mean, because quite honestly, back in the day, thank goodness TMZ and camera phones didn't exist. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a lot of us might have been very embarrassed. Is it true that extras on that film? were John Bon Jovi and Tom Cruise. Is that a true story, or is that, uh, is that false? Uh, I, well, number one, they weren't extras, but uh, yeah, it is 100% Cameos. true. Cameos in this it, film. Uh, cameos. Okay, better word. absolutely true. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom Cruise is in the first one. We heavily made him up because he'd never been shot before and he wanted to be, uh, and that was in the first one. And in the second one, uh, uh, John Bon Jovi got his SAG card by getting shot on camera uh, coming out of the pit no so, yes, kidding 100 percent true so yes. john bon jovi got his screen actors guild card by getting shot in a cameo in young guns that is a true fact yeah. of pop culture and, and the beauty of it is john wanted to hang around on set for a couple of weeks to write the soundtrack he wanted to soak up the ambiance he wanted to get some firsthand experience and then one night he's like hey let's throw john in there and shoot him <laughs> no so kidding that happened. Yes. Yeah. And so, so Tom Cruise at this point of his career had never been shot on camera before, is what you're saying. Like, like no, a, he never had. Uh, and, and he was a friend of Emilio's from the, uh, the Outsider days. Right? Yeah. And he came to visit uh, and was hanging around and, say, and, you know, for a goof, said, hey, man, let's shoot me. Uh, so they made him up so he was virtually unrecognizable. But if you freeze frame uh, the, the, uh, the big finale where, you know, uh, Emilio pops out of the trunk at the end. Uh, one of the first guys he shoots is Tom. <laughs> that is unbelievable, Lou. I mean, that is absolutely remarkable. Lou Diamond Phillips here on the Rich Eisen Show. You mentioned you have four daughters. Have you shown any of your uh, early work to them? Have you have you gone back in the day with your, your the, kids? The older girls have, uh, you know, seen some of the, some of the work, but I mean, 
uh, when Grace and Bella and Lily were young, they saw La Bamba, uh, and, and <laughs> it was so traumatic. I, I haven't shown uh, Indigo, who's now 13, uh, that film just yet. So, uh, yeah, that, that's an occupational hazard. You know, you don't want to see your dad die. Well, no, I understand that. Um, I hear you. I, uh, let's let's talk about the here and now as well uh, before, again, we get to uh, uh, Prodigal Son. You were fantastic in Goliath um, in the episodes that you were in. That show is dynamite, man. Um, and I wonder what it was like uh, on this. I mean, you've been on the set uh, with some f- fellow uh, thespians before. You mentioned Edward James almost about Billy Bob being in uh, on screen with him. Lou, what was that like? Well, I, you know, it's so funny, man. I'm at the point in my career where if an opportunity comes up and it's somebody I want to work with, right. I really don't even have to look at the material. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do a couple of episodes with Billy Bob. I didn't even read it, you know. Right. I said yes. You know, same thing with 24 and working with Kiefer and Dennis Hopper in that yep. first season. There, there, there are actors that I just want to work with. And, and so uh, uh, because part of the life experience, you know, is, is uh, you know, one of the perks of it all. Uh, and and uh, I got to say, man, I mean, from an artistic standpoint, working with Billy Bob, you know, knowing that it was going to be a brief, it, it was just wonderful. And and his whole approach to the work, uh, it's it's all about the acting, it's all about the story. It was, you know, it it, it was just a gift. And uh, I, I wish I could have done more, but you know, I was I was happy to have what I had. Lou Diamond Phillips here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's get to uh, Prodigal Son. What attracted you to this show to do it, Lou? Uh, you know, what's funny is that, you know, I'm playing a police lieutenant, and those are a dime a dozen in procedurals. And this role was so unique and so original and had so much going on, not only in the backstory, but in the relationships that he has with the other characters, that that, that was a very easy yes. I was I was extremely happy to, to be involved with this and the fact that it's been so well received that it's a hit and uh, people are loving the entire ensemble. Um, it's, you know, and, and now when I look at it, it's crazy because we got, you know, Michael Sheen, we got Tom Payne, we got Bellamy Young. We, we have a murderer's row of, of an ensemble and, you know, Catherine Zeta Jones is yeah. joining us this year. Yeah. Um, I, I really, really just feel incredibly fortunate. Well, again, um, thanks for joining me here, Lou. I've been a big fan of yours for, for many, many years. And I, you know, I just... As much as this show is about sports, it's, it's, it's about pop culture as well. And you have been in some incredible films and television shows throughout the years. And I'd love to just keep kicking it with you whenever you want to you know, promote anything or come back on. I appreciate the time. I, I'd love to come back anytime, Rich. Thanks for having me. You bet. That's Lou Diamond Phillips, at Lou D. Phillips on Twitter. Check out Prodigal Son, Tuesdays, 9 Eastern on Fox, right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 